What is happening, everybody? We back with another reaction video. I know y'all couldn't wait for this. Y'all was salivating, waiting. No, I'm just anyway, no, I ain't gonna stupid. Uh, I'll be watching a video from the channel Looper. Uh, it's called the saddest ending, saddest endings in movie history. Hmm. I'll be the judge of that. And we'll see if their list is worthy of my time. I don't know this channel, so. <laughs> uh, first time seeing any of this stuff. But it came up as recommended for some reason. I don't know why. At least I probably have recommended other stuff, but I just didn't pay attention to it. But anyway, here we go. As fun as it is to watch a great movie, there's no guarantee that you'll walk out oh, of the theater feeling on. good yourself. Here are a few fantastic <laughs> clips where the last few minutes are so monumentally depressing that they're almost guaranteed to wring a few tears from the audience. If you only People saw the last three minutes of End oh. of Watch, you might oh, think yeah. this cop drama was ending on a happy this note. Ended, the final like, scene oh, features man. two buddies having a laugh over a crazy story on what looks like a pretty good day. Unfortunately, context is everything. In actuality, the camaraderie between officers Brian Taylor and Mike Zavala is an incredibly bittersweet flashback scene, yeah. one that jumps back to a moment before Zavala was gunned down by gangsters. Taylor and Zavala are super cops. In fact, they're such good cops that they try to take down the Sinaloa cartel, only that doesn't pan out too well. After disrupting the cartel's business, the officers are ambushed by heavily armed thugs, and despite their bravery, Taylor yeah, is like how they went out and Zavala is murdered. After cops. learning about his partner's death, Taylor is absolutely shattered. Zavala was his best friend in the world, and at the funeral, Taylor is so grief-stricken that he can only muster he was four my powerful brother. words that make all those happy moments heartbreaking. He was, was my, my brother. brother. Thanos first appeared in the Marvel Cinematic Universe yeah, yeah, all the way back in 2012. Rough, but when he finally arrived on Earth Great with the movie. Infinity Gauntlet, Earth's mightiest heroes were completely overmatched. With a single snap of his fingers, Thanos wiped out half the population of the universe, in including the majority of our beloved heroes. Black Panther, Doctor Strange, and even poor Teen Groot went up in smoke. The most painful death to watch, though, was Peter Parker's. Start? Yeah, yeah, people was all in the theater when this is uh, I don't feel so good. Even though he just fought the toughest villain in the MCU, Parker's still just a kid, afraid of fading away. Avengers Endgame will undoubtedly undo a lot of the damage, but when a horrified Captain America, the team's strongest and most optimistic member, is this wrecked, you know things have gone bad. Infinity War might have the darkest ending of any major blockbuster ever. There's no moral victory here, there's no feel-good speech. For the first time ever, the Avengers have truly lost, and it all ends with Thanos admiring his handiwork, smiling as the sun rises on a grateful universe. Like, Despite yeah. their godlike superpowers, the Avengers are a sad bunch of oh, people, and day. the most yeah, tragic might just be Captain Steve Rogers, America's. a man out of time. In Captain America the First Avenger, the star-spangled superhero decides to sacrifice his life crashing a hydro yeah, plane into the Arctic I mean, I ice. Like sad In those final moments before taking the plunge, the Cap time, promises to take his new love, Peggy Carter, dancing as soon as he returns. Okay. Obviously, neither expects Steve to make it back home, but, well, you've seen movies. I, I understood that reference. When Cap finally returns, he learns that he's been asleep for nearly seven decades. It's a gut punch of a moment, and the look of shock and sadness on Cap's face is heartbreaking. Yeah, he survived a suicide mission, but the world he knew is gone, and he's been separated from the woman he loves for most of a century. When Fury finally asks if Cap is going to be okay, all his pain is summed up in one sentence. Yeah. Yeah, I just... I had a date. War movies aren't really known oh, for their yeah. upbeat oh, endings, glory. but when it comes to pure tear-jerking oh, power, yeah, nothing I goes cried. out of your heartstrings like 1989's Glory. Kid. This Civil War flick tells the story I mean, of the 54th Massachusetts Infantry, which was the first African-American yeah, regiment to fight for the Union Army. The regiment was led by Colonel Robert Shaw, played in the film by Matthew Broderick. And after overcoming all the racism you'd expect from the 1860s, yeah, this Shaw and the 54th so wind up leading the charge in the film's this. climactic battle. He didn't even, he Unfortunately, just that battle doesn't go their way. 
After being surrounded by Confederate soldiers, Shaw charges the enemy, hoping to inspire his men, and he's quickly gunned down. Enraged, Private Silas Tripp, a role that earned Denzel Washington an Academy Award. Award, picks up the flag and charges after the colonel, only to be shot down seconds later. Their sacrifice inspires the rest of the Maybe 54th to die. rush out of the ravine and continue their charge. But despite their bravery, the historic soldiers are no match for cannonballs, and all the characters we've come to love, played by the likes of Morgan Freeman, Gary Elwes, and Andre Brower, are blown to oblivion. If that wasn't sad enough, the movie ends with Shaw's and Tripp's bodies being buried side by side in a mass grave. Gone Baby Gone isn't exactly a feel-good film to begin with, and the ending movie, is appropriately yeah. downbeat. Based on the novel by Dennis Lehane, this thriller follows two Boston detectives, Patrick Kenzie and Angie Gennaro, who are hired to find a little girl named Amanda. At first, they believe this kid was murdered by a local drug dealer, but as they dig deeper into the case, they discover a surprising conspiracy. As it turns out, Amanda's concerned uncle kidnapped her from her abusive addict mother with the help of several high-ranking cops. But Patrick isn't a big believer in moral ambiguity and brings the conspiracy down and has the little girl sent back home. You may not regret it when you get home. You may not regret it for a year, but when you get to where I am, I promise you, you will. Sure enough, it doesn't take long for regret to set in when Patrick goes to visit Amanda. He sees that her mom is just as awful as ever and realizes he might have damned Amanda to a life of poverty, neglect, and mistreatment. In the final moments, he volunteers to babysit Amanda and sits beside her, watching the traumatized, lonely girl as she stares at the television. Damn. It might seem weird to say this about a movie where a gorilla fights a helicopter, but Rise of the Planet of the Apes has more than its fair share of emotional moments. Nothing oh, can let top me the guess, finale it's when, when Caesar, separated by mo with, uh, master Andy Serkis, says goodbye yeah. to his human friend, Will Rodman. Yeah. Their relationship is the Bye emotional crux Franco. of the story. Caesar has known Will what his entire say? life, and the biologist is basically his adoptive dad. This is home. In fact, Will is the guy who gave Something Caesar his above like average intelligence. But after Will is forced to put Caesar in a primate Something. sanctuary, the chimpanzee decides it's time for a revolution. After sparking a full-blown primate rebellion and a battle on the Golden Gate Bridge, Caesar and his army disappear into a redwood forest. But before vanishing into the trees, Caesar is confronted by Will, who begs the chimp to come back seen home. This in a while. That's when Caesar seen pulls his once. foster father close and Will. whispers in his ear. One half to Caesar. Oh, Caesar is With those three powerful words, Caesar and Will realize nothing will ever be the same. Tom Hanks movies generally leave audiences so feeling pretty perdition? good, but Road to Perdition is yeah, a bloody to exception to that cheerful rule. This gangster flick finds Hanks playing Michael Sullivan Sr., a mob enforcer out for one. revenge while trying to make sure his surviving son, Michael Jr., doesn't it. wind up Still dead too. Worse. That's easier said than done when you're being hunted by a psychopathic hitman. For a moment, it seems like everything might be okay. Then Michael's violent past catches up Wasn't with him when ambushed by an assassin. After taking two bullets in the back, Michael lies dying as the psychopathic hitman assembles an old-timey camera and begins taking photos of his bloody victim. Michael Jr. shows up with a gun to interrupt the hitman's sick hobby, but unlike his dad, the boy isn't a killer. Fortunately, the distraction gives his father enough time to gun down the assassin before shuffling off this mortal coil. What really seals the deal and cues the sobbing, though, is Michael Jr.'s final lines, answering the question of whether his father was a good man. I always give the same answer. I just tell them he was my father. Directed by Martin He's Scorsese, like, <laughs> Shutter just, uh, Island is a frightening film noir that finds Leonardo DiCaprio as Teddy Daniels, I saw this a movie, detective who's investigating the disappearance on an Alcatraz-style mental hospital. Hey, but as Teddy and I wonder if I was doing something into the case, I was Teddy to makes watch. a horrible discovery. He isn't really Teddy. In reality, he's Andrew Latis, a World War II vet who killed his mentally ill wife after she murdered their kids. His partner is actually his psychologist, and the whole investigation is an elaborate role-playing game meant to bring Andrew back to reality. And if the game doesn't work, then poor Andrew has to get lobotomized. They after always this shocking twist, people it seems you. that Andrew reverts back to his Teddy persona, That'll forcing his him. doctors to perform the lobotomy. <laughs> But before he's taken away to his mind-numbing fate, Teddy looks over at Chuck and asks a haunting question. Clearly, it doesn't work. Which would be worse? To live as a monster? Or to die as a good man? It's a simple line, but it conveys the crushing sadness of Andrew's story. The experiment worked. Andrew knows exactly who he is and what he's done. 
It's his guilt that leads him to accept his grisly fate. Arnold Schwarzenegger movies aren't generally oh, considered yeah. tear jokes. Oh, the me, ending uh, of Terminator 2 Judgment Day has caused so many sobs from macho movie fans that it's basically the action movie equivalent of The Notebook. You think I'm unemotional, don't you? I can be emotional. Jesus, I cried like a child at the end of Terminator 2. Sent from the future to protect teenage John Connor, the T-800 starts out this sci-fi flick as an ice-cold killer robot. As he spends time with a future resistance leader, however, the T-800 becomes the teen's best friend and father figure, growing increasingly lovable as he battles with a shape-shifting android. He's picking up slang words, developing human emotions, and learning you can't just go around killing people. He also realizes that if humanity is going to survive, then all Terminators need to be destroyed. After defeating the T-1000, Arnold realizes that if he doesn't destroy the advanced AI inside his own head, that tech will eventually yeah, give rise to a robot rebellion like that will doom mankind. So like despite John's cheer. pleas for him to stay, the T-800 slowly lowers himself into a pit of Whoa. molten steel. He gives a thumbs up before disintegrating completely, letting John know Everybody everything know is going to be okay. <laughs> but despite that reassurance, poor John is in tears, and so is everybody watching the saddest ending yeah, that's of like the only his career. Father figure that he's really known. I know now why you cry. But it's something you can never do that. Did. That made me start crying. I was With like, movies oh, like man. Requiem for a Dream in his filmography, it's safe to say that Darren oh, Aronofsky yeah, loves a truly depressing Wasn't ending. Wasn't his heart all like the films giving he's out of directed, something? None have caused this kind of stuff. He had a heart attack. attack is his last. This match gritty and grim drama they didn't follows really the story of Randy the Ram Robinson, like, really a professional after wrestler after who's far after from his in ring glory days. This dude has lived a hard life and made some bad decisions, and now he's all alone. His daughter doesn't want anything to do with him, his romantic life isn't working out, and the world outside the ring is nothing but pain and misery. Lonely and depressed, Randy gets back into the wrestling game, where at least the fans respect and adore him. But stepping back into the ring comes at a high price. Randy has a bad heart and knows that another match might be his last. However, when he hears the cheers of the crowd, the wrestler climbs up onto the turnbuckle to perform his signature move even as his heart starts to fail. Yeah, okay, when yeah, he leaps down that, onto yeah. his opponent, we know it's the last time he'll ever do the legendary cry, Ram Jam. Like, but it's all rough. worth it for Randy, because he's he made the choice. for the only family he's ever known, the fans, who now have to watch their hero die in the ring in front of them. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one. Those, yeah, those were some pretty sad moments. I gave him that. that was, I gave him, I gave him Looper that. Yeah, that was uh, that especially the. I remember specifically the uh, the Terminator one when I was a kid. It made me like start just crying. I was just sitting there and just tears just start coming all down my face. Oh, that that one got me. And uh, the Spider Man one. I mean, I didn't cry, but I I felt like my eyes were watering, like I was getting ready to cry. <laughs> and people, it was because yeah, I remember when I was in the theater, some uh, it was like a bunch of girls next to me, was like six or seven of them, they all came in together, and they start crying, and they start bawling their asses out. It's like they might have been, and they, they, they weren't like little girls. They like they might have been, maybe in their early twenties. <laughs> and they, they start bawling when, when, when he was a Mister Stark, and he started like, you could see like the ash coming over him. And I was like, oh, even in the day, I was like, oh, he really feels it too because of his spider sense. And I was like, ah, oh, this is rough. And he's a kid too. I mean, he'd have still like has disappeared, <laughs> even if he wasn't there. But like still just to see it and then my black panther level <laughs> when he disappeared I, I heard like in the like around like i don't know it sounded like he came like closer to the exit because i was like way up in the top and it's not like because he was like this is no place to die or something like that as soon as he's i turned that somebody jumped up oh hell no <laughs> 
I had to cover my mouth because I didn't want to start laughing and ruin the moment for people. <laughs> it was, oh, hell no. <laughs> oh, my God. Now, yeah, I, I kept thinking um, Iron Man was going to disappear. But then they said, I said, okay, everybody else going to do it. But then it was, it was just Iron Man and... Uh, what's that? Nebula was there. I was like, "Damn, that's, that's weird that he just left." <laughs> um, and I was so sure that I said Iron Man and Captain America on this are like probably the main original, well, not the main, well, like the original Avengers. Probably most of them gonna disappear. I was like Thor is gonna stay, and then they're going to kind of. They're going to do a thing where the new heroes kind of stop Thanos and then bring the everybody back. And then that's kind of like the, the passing of the torch to the new hero because these people, contracts end. <laughs> and then they're like, you know what? I made my money. This has reinvigorated my career and all this stuff. So I'm good. I'm going to go over here and do direct some stuff or do some other movies. Like I'm, I'm tired of working out. <laughs> And to be in shape and shit. Getting that that uh Hugh Jackman dream where you like, look, I'm tired of eating six chickens a day and working out like five times a day. I would I would love to be able to play with my kids. Or and Chris Evans like, I would love to be able to date someone wrong so I can get married so I can have kids. Or you know, like I think he, he seems to be more uh he wants to get behind the camera, he wants to direct and stuff like that. So and it's kinda hard to do that when you multiple film deal with somebody you gotta exercise stay a certain physique and all this stuff like, I can imagine it's rough to do it's hard to do that and you have a passion to do something else you know you want to evolve not stay in one spot you don't want to be just known for hey he was Captain America or you definitely don't want to be remembered as being uh, the human torch like <laughs> I mean I don't know Michael B. Jordan definitely don't want to be remembered but at least he did you know, hell, um, kill mark, almost a hell mark. <laughs> kill, he did kill mark. Just, I guess he kind of redeemed himself with that. But I mean, he was fine as a human toy, but just that overall movie was just horrible. But, anyway, I'm trying to think of some sad moments in movies that made me like cry. So I think I, I, I can't know. I can never think of them now. I know when I watched Butch Cassidy and Sundance as a kid, I cried. When I was a kid, uh, well, I cried after cause my dad said they all died. Because I think if I remember correctly, in that movie, it just shows them busting out the doors, and then you just see and hear gunshots. Um, I guess that after watching The Chinese Connection, when Bruce Lee ran out and jumped in the air, you hear a bunch of gunshots. I knew that they killed him. Uh, I was like, why did they kill him? Like, they, they, clearly, he has no weapon. He can't do anything. You, know, you had to shoot him. Uh, I can't remember why I'm blanking. I can't remember a lot of movies I thought well, I was, it was sad. It made me tear. Which is funny. Aquaman made me tear up a bit. It was a scene um, when he's when he when he uh, when he when he was reunited with his mother, and he saw he talking about how his father goes to the dock every day to see his see if she comes back and stuff like that. And I was like, for some reason, that got me. The facial expressions, the way he was talking about, it, and they showed up, they showed his father. Walking to the dock like waiting. He said he comes here every morning, same time, waiting to see every day since she left to see if she comes back. I was like, man, that is, well, there's love there. It's like people who wait, somebody go to jail and they wait for you to get out and they don't mess around like that. That's love. You want to keep that person and do right by that person. 
because that's hard to find. But anyway, I can't run, and I don't want this to go too far over, but it's already 20 minutes. But uh, what y'all think of it? Were these moments sad for you? What are some other sad moments in cinema or hell, let's, hell, let's just get you going, video games, whatever, that uh, that you thought were it's just as sad or sadder than this. Or maybe not quite as sad, but they but they they struck you and they were sad for you, made you maybe tear up. Let me know down in the comments down below. Like and subscribe and I'll see y'all later.